Today's daf, daf tes. And we'll begin on the bottom of daf tes on Bez. Omar Rabba, the last line on daf tes on Bez. Shochat Sipor Me'er Vyontif. Ein Mechasim Oso Vyontif. We had the case of someone who shechted a bird on Yontif and in, such, and in such a case, again, there are different shitas and different conditions that have to be met, but there is a possibility of kisi adam. Let's say, for example, if he had it, what's called a decker notes, the bodyom, the shovel was dug in on Erev Yontif, so that would allow him to do Kisi Adam on Yontif. But Rabbi says that's only in a case where he shechted the bird on Yontif itself. If he shechted the bird on Erev Yontif, then the assumption would have been that he should certainly have done the Kisi Adam on Erev Yontif. And by delaying the Kisi Adam until Yontif, he puts himself in a situation where he's doing something on Yontif that's not necessary. He could have done it on Erev Yontif. And that's the general rule with regard to Yontif, that anything that could have been done on Erev Yontif should be done on Erev Yontif, so that we don't have to expand the tircha of Yontif. And you have to add one more important point, and that is that there's no heter of Litzorech Simchas Hayom in this case because he's allowed to eat the meat of the bird even without Kisi Adam. So now we're going to start today's daf, which is daf tes. Now, what we're going to see here is that Rabba continues and although in the case of Kisi Adam, he prohibits Kisi Adam when the shechita was done on Erev Yontif, in a case of what's called Gilgal Isa, he permits Afrashas Chala on Yontif. Now let's just talk a little bit about Chala. The Torah commands us in Parshas Shlach, after the fiasco of the Meraglin, in the mitzvah, of Chala, and the Torah calls it Ariso Sechem. Ariso Sechem means a dough. Every dough requires what's called Gilgal, just simply to create a dough. You have to add the water into the flour and then mix it together. That act of kneading it is called Isa. And the Torah says, take Reishis Ariso Sechem, the beginning of your Isa, and separate a part, and it's got the same status as Truma. And it has to be given to the Kohen. So that's called the Mitzvah of Afrashas Chala. Now the Torah commands all agricultural mitzvahs in Eretz Yisrael. That's called the Chovas Karka. Those mitzvahs do not apply in Chutzlar. So for example, there's no mitzvah of Chumas or Maestros in Chutzlar. However, Chala is a little bit different although Chala is a mitzvah tluya ba'aretz, and on a Doraisa level, Chala only applies in Eretz Yisrael. However, the Rabbanon instituted Chala's chutzlaretz. And the reason they did that is because there's something unique about Chala in the constellation of mitzvah satluyas ba'aretz, and that is that Gilgal, which is a maisa that you do, generates the chiv Chala. So it's not just a matter of the fact that the flower was a result and produced by the grains that grew in Eretz Yisrael. That's just the background. But the real machayev is the Gilgal Isa. And Gilgal Isa is not something that depends upon Eretz Yisrael. Bottom line is the Rabbana required Afrashas Chala in Chutzlar. That's called Chalas Chutzlar. Now we have to add one other introduction, and that is that we're not mafrish, rumos or maestros, 
on Shabbos or on Yom Tov. And the reason for that is because of what's called Nire Kimisake Mona. It looks like a tikkun, making something that otherwise would have been prohibited permissible. And anything that fits, on, fits that description was prohibited on a rabbinic enactment level on Shabbos and Yom Tov. So Rabbi says the following, Gilgal Esau may heir of Yontif. Now you and I would have said that Gilgal Esau may heir of Yontif is identical to the case of checking a bird on Erev Yontif. And just like Rabbi had just immediately on the previous Om established that if you shechted a bird on Erev Yontif, there's no Kisei Adam on Yontif. You should have done that at Erev Yontif. We would have anticipated that Rabbi would apply consistently the same principle to Hafrashas Kalam. And he would have said that since you were Megalgil the Isa on Erev Yontif, therefore you should have been Mafresh Kalam on Erev Yontif. And yet, to our surprise, Rabbi says, Mafresh mi mena chalosa bi Yontif. Now, even though we're not Mafresh Trumas and Maishas on Yontif, because it's Nirik and Masaki in Mono, he's Masaki in the Peros. And logically, we would have said, therefore, included in that zero of prohibiting our frushes, trumas, and mysers would be our frushas, Allah. Nevertheless, Rabbah surprises us, and he says that that zero prohibiting our frushes, trumas, and mysers did not extend, did not include our frushes, And therefore, our frushes, is muteres on yontif. And Lechatchila, therefore, you can do Lisha on Yontif and go ahead and, and be Mafresh Chala Mina Isa on Yontif. And now Rabbi says that even if you did the Gilgal Isa on Erev Yontif, nevertheless, you're allowed to be Mafresh Chala on Yontif. And there's a long discussion that spans many, many centuries of halachic literature to try to explain what is the difference within Rabbi Shita between the case of a Shita on Erev Yontif, where Rabbi prohibits Kisei Adam on Yontif, and the case of Afrashas Chala, where Rabbi says that since whatever that reason is, we'll call it the unknown X, but since X, therefore, even if you are Megalgal the Isa on Erev Yontif, you're permitted to be Mafresh Kala on Yontif. Now, amongst the various commentaries here, I can only mention to you one or two, which are very similar. One is attributed to many, many different achronim, starting with the Maram, who lived approximately three centuries ago. And he says that in the case of Shita, Shita is lohuta lechasel. We're not going to allow you to do the kisi adam on Yontif itself if you shechted the bird, in this case, on Erev Yontif, because this whole situation of allowing you to do Kisei Adam, even in a case where you shechted it on Yontif, is only B'diyevet. Really, that loch is like Beis Hillel, that you should not shecht on Yontif and put yourself into a situation where you'll have to do Kisei Adam. If you went ahead and you checked it on Yontif, then we'll allow you to do Kisei Adam. But that's not the ideal situation. So it's only been the evidence that we permitted Kisei Adam when you checked it on Yontif. If you checked it on Erev Yontif, then we're not even going to apply the B'diyevet situation. We're not going to allow you to do Kisei Adam. But in contrast, with regard to Lisha, the needing a dough, there is no prohibition regarding Lisha on Yontif. Shrit on Yontif, we prohibit L'chatchil because we don't want you to have to do Kisi Adam. So avoid the whole situation and don't do Shrit on Yontif. 
you did shechit on Yom Tov, will allow you to do kisei adam, but not if you shecht it on erev Yom Tov. But in the case of lisha, when you take flour and you add water to the flour, you knead the dough. That's mutar on Yom Tov. And there were never any compunctions about prohibiting Lish on Yont because there's no Kisi Adam, obviously, in the case of Lish. And I apologize to the other of you if I'm not looking in your eyes because we have a few people on Skype. So I'm just trying to do the best I can with the tools I have. So then it's like a Tiku Heros. But for the Chala, it's not called a No, that's going to be the Gemara that we're going to study now. Why in the case of Chala, it's not called a Tiku? That's going to be the difference between Chalas Eretz Yisrael and Chalas Kutzot. But first, before we get to that question, we're, we're addressing an, an earlier question, a more basic question. And that is, even in the case of Shechita, when Rabbi said that we allow you to do Kisi Adam if the Shechita took place on Yantif, but if the Shechita took place on Erev Yantif, Rabbi prohibits Kisi Adam and that's not a mania of Simchas Yontif, because he's allowed to eat the Bosar even without Kisya. But nevertheless, why didn't Rabbi consistently apply his principle to a case where he did the Gilgal Isa on Erev Yontif and establish that there should not be any Afrasha? We're not going to allow him to do Afrasha on Yontif itself because he did the Gilgal Isa on Erev Yontif. So the Maharam says that there's a fundamental difference. In the case of Shita, we never wanted you to check to begin with. In the first place, on Yom Tov. The Ebed will allow you Kisi Adam, but not if you didn't cheat on Erev Yom Tov. But in the case of Lisha, that generates through Gilgal Isa, Chiv of Chala, of Afrash's Chala, the Torah, nor the Rabbanon, never prohibited Lisha on Yom Tov. And we're allowed to knead a dough, and we're allowed to put it into the oven and bake the dough. And therefore, the situation of Hafrash's Kala and Yontif is not a bit of it. And we'll explain as we go along exactly why not. But be that as it may, you're allowed to do the leech. In Chiti, you're not allowed to do the leech. It says the Maram, in the case of Lisha, even if you did the leech on Erev Yontif, we're going to allow you to do the Hafrash on Yontif. Because we never prohibited Lich on Yantif itself, the Chsam Sofer has a slightly different version of explaining the reason why Afrosh's Kala is Mutter, even though he did the Gildal Isla on Erev Yantif, whereas Kisi Adam, they were not Matir if he did the, the Shkita on Erev Yantif. And he says the reason for that is because Bederech Klau. Mostly, Afrosh's Kala on Yontif comes up when you did the Gilgal on Yontif. It's kind of like a principle, if you're familiar with it, that the entire episode of doing Elisha for Yontif on Erev Yontif is unusual. And again, that reflects what we saw before in the Maran, that Lisha's mutter on Yantif. So the women would bake their breads on Yantif. And he says that it's a great simchas Yantif to prepare your Isa on Yantif and make it fresh, fresh gebak, as we call it in Yiddish, and eat it on Yantif. Masha Enke, he says in Katras, Kisi Adam, Shechting on Yontif is not classic. On the contrary, they shechted on Erev Yontif. And therefore, in the case of Kisi Adam, we don't have the spur of Milsal Shkich HaLogazu Be'erev The Gemara says the following, Ava Shmuel, Avua De Shmuel, Omar, Afilu Gilgil Isa Me'erev Yontif, Ein Mafish Mimena Chalosa Be'yontif. According to Shavuot de Shmuel, the prohibition against Afrosha with regard to Trumas of Maestros applies equally to Afrosha's Chal. It's not just in Truma and Maaser. It applies to Chal and Yontif. And if you had an Isa that you prepared on Yontif, then although we shouldn't have allowed you 
to be mafresh chala, but because you did the Gilgal on Yantif will allow you to be mafresh chala, but it's a special dispensation, a special head. If, on the other hand, you did the Gilgal on Erev Yantif, then we expect you to be mafresh chala on Erev Yantif. And therefore, Avud Shmuel takes the original principle of Rabba and applies it to its logical conclusion, namely, that just like Rabbi said, if you check the, a bird on Erev Yontif, you can't do the Kisei Adam on Yontif, so too says Avur the Shmuel, if you were Megalgil and Is on Erev Yontif, we're not going to allow you to do that for Shaskal on Yontif. Lema says the Gemara, the Pliga the Shmuel al Avur the Shmuel. We set up a Machlokas now between the father and the son, between Avur the Shmuel and Shmuel. The Omar Shmuel, Chalas Chutz Loretz, there's a fundamental difference between Chala in Eretz Yisro, which is Doraisa, and Chala in Chutzot, which was an enactment of the Rabbanim. And to try to summarize the fundamental difference between Chala Eretz Yisro and Chala Chutzot in one sentence, we would say the following. And I hope you'll follow this. Again, this is Daf Yomi, So what I'm about to say to you now is a two-hour lecture. But I can't put it into enough yogic. Talas Eretz Yisrael tovelas, which means it generates tevel. And you're not allowed to eat from tevel before you take off trumas and maestras. Same thing applies to chal. So trumas and maestras in Eretz Yisrael and chal in Eretz Yisrael are identical tovelas. It creates tevel. Not so in chutzar. It's when the Rabbanan created chal in chutzar. It's after Magal and Esau. It doesn't generate teva. It's a separate chiv hafroshas trumas meiser. Excuse me, hafroshas chala in chutzar. It's without teva, which means that even before you mafresh chala in chutzar, you're allowed to eat from the isa. You can bake the dough and eat from the bread without being mafresh chala. And then at the end of the day, you'll leave a little bit over. That's called no saying eno of mitzad zev, yochel mitzad achir. And he looks at the challah and he says, all right, this tip is going to be challah, but I'm not my friend yet. And he eats from the rest of the challah. And there's no isin teva. Therefore, the whole concept of tikkun is inapplicable to challah's chutzot. With regard to Afrosh's Kala and Eretz Yisrael, that's a Tikkun, and the Rabbanan prohibited it because it looks like Tikkun Mana, because Kala and Eretz Yisrael Toveles, and there's a generation, it generates an Eastern Tevel, and you're removing that Eastern Tevel via the Afrosh, and that would be a Tikkun. It's like a Tomei going into Mikvah, taking a Kali that was manufactured by a guy and being Tovelet in the Mikvah and Yant, if we don't allow that. And certainly not on Shabbos, because it's Tikkun Mana. I mean, it's a whole issue why Hasidim go to Mikvah on, 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 on Shabbos. You know, not so posh. But in any event, when it comes to Chutzlar, since Chalas Chutzlar is Eina Tovelas, there's no Iser, there's no prohibition with regard to Chalas Chutzlar. It's why you're going to eat the Chala without being mafrich, and then you'll be mafrich at the end. You know exactly how much you have to leave over is an issue. So then, if this be the case, then as far as as far as Hafrosh's Chala in Chutzlar is concerned, where there's no Tikkun, therefore you're allowed to do it on Yontif. And we're not going to prohibit it on Yontif, like we would Hafrosh's Trumas and Maestros, where the Torah gave the Chachamim the authority to see things that look like a Malachid or Rice, like something that looks like Tikkun Mana and prohibited, but not so with regard to Chalas Futzlans. Now let's go back to Avud de Shmuel. Avud de Shmuel said, if you Megalgal the Isa on Erev Yontif, you're not allowed to be Mafrich Chal on Yontif. And he didn't differentiate between Eretz Yisrael and Chutzlans. Is Mistima Sadvarim, without qualification, it seems clear that Avur the Shmuel would prohibit hafroshas halo in chutzlaritz if you were megalgil the isa on erev yantiv applying Rabbi's principle like we saw in kisi adam with shkita to the case of halo of gilgul isa and that's against Shmuel because Shmuel says in chutzlaritz is no tevel 
and there's no Tebel, there's no Isra of Russia, it's not a Tikkun. Oh, my Rava, Rava now wants to reconcile the father and the son. Milo Mode Shmuel, Shem Kara Ole Shem Asura Lizari. Says Rava, there are two dimensions, Tafrosh's Kal. And the, what we're about to say is specific to Afrosh's Kala in Chutz Lawrence. Number one is the question of Tevel, and number two is a different dimension, and that is the Chalus Shem Chal. Chalus Chutz Lawrence has a Chalus Shem Chal. What that means is I have to give it to a Kohen, or let's say in our day the Kohen of Matmeim, so we burn it, but it's Asura Lizarit. It has the identical status of of Chal in Eretz Yisrael or Chumas and Maishus in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, the Gemara is now postulating in the name of Rava that even Shmuel, who says that you're allowed to eat without being mafresh, she agrees that at the end of the day, after you eat your bread, you have to leave over some for Chal. That piece that you leave over for Chal has a shame Chal. And it's also a Zorin. And therefore, when the Rabbanan made the Takana and they prohibited Afrosha on Yontif, whether it's Afrosha's Trumus of Mises or Afrosha's Kala, they included Chutzlaretz in that Gzera, in that Takana, because the Chala in Chutzlaretz has one fundamental similarity, commonality to Chala in Eretz Yisrael or Trumus of Mises in Eretz Yisrael. And that is the Chalosh Shem Chala, which means Asura Luzon. Rabosa, we now begin the Mishnah on Taf Tes Omenal. So if you include in more recently, we're starting something new. Okay, then? Couple, you want to join us for this? Uh, we're going to start something brand new now. So. This is the Beitz, but a brand new mission of the Beitz. Another Beitz. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know what the I status have, is. This is a halachic issue. I, I had one at home, but I didn't bring it. So how about, let's just take, you know, the classic Gemara, the Beitz, you know what I mean? The old-fashioned Gemara. You know, okay. before Artsville came into, into existence. Okay. I would give you this one, but there's a lack of child because I really want to return it. And I'm not sure if you're allowed to use the safer that you bought when you intend to return, if you know what I mean? So since I intend to return this, I'm hoping to return this, you know, because it's it's this is not good for me, this space. So I don't want to use it. All right. Now, what is the subject of this Mishnah? This is on Daftes of an olive, approximately nine lines down from the top. I didn't count it. There are many different ways of giving a title to this mission. One is it's the Mishnah of Sulamot, of ladders. That's one title I would give. Another title is it's the Mishnah of Shovchos, of a Shovah. A Shovah is, a, is what we call a chicken coop. Or in this case, it's a dove coop. That's where the doves flock, and that's where the owner of the doves, you know, he feeds his doves and so forth and so on. Another title for this Mishnah could be Mukta. A third title for this Mishnah could be Tircha Shalo Yisera. And perhaps the most profound title of this Mishnah is called Maras Ha'ayim. The Mishnah records a machlokus between Beit Chama and Beit Silo. We're going to have about five different variations in the Gemara of what this Machlokas is all about. But we're going to go with the simplest, straightforward explanation of the Mishnah. And we may be oversimplifying a more complicated Mishnah, but we're not allowed to move a man owns two coops. And he has a special ladder that he uses. He leans the ladder against the coop. And he wants to move it from one coop to the other. And ultimately, his goal 
is simply to grab onto one of the birds, which are called yonim or gozlos, and shecht it on yontif, which he's allowed to do. But the problem is that most people use a ladder to do construction work. That's called latiach es gado. What they did was, if you have a roof, from time to time, they would have to flatten the roof. And that's a violation of a malacha do rice on young that has nothing to do with ochel nefesh. And here's where Maris Ayin plays a role. When the spectator looks at, we'll call him Reuven, who is now moving his ladder from one shovel to the other, he doesn't know what Reuven's intention is. When Reuven reaches the other shovel, then it'll become clear that he wants to take the gozos, which is okay. That's the Tzorah Kofel Nefesh. But in the meantime, Reuven has a spectator here, we'll call him Shimon, and Shimon sees Reuven from a distance moving a ladder. He doesn't realize that that ladder is a Shovach ladder. There were special ladders that they had to climb up to the Shovach. But from a distance, it looks like a different kind of ladder, a ladder that's used for construction. And that's my assignment. The Torah says, the Yisab Nikir, that you have to look very clean in the eyes of the public. So Bechame says, I'm not going to allow you to move the show, to move the ladder from one shovel to another shovel, because the onlooker thinks that you are climbing up to your roof to fix the roof. Avomateu mechalon lechalon. Now, within each shovach, there were different layers. Some were higher, some were lower, where they kept a zug, a pair of doves, a male and a female. So they would have a pair in one little box, another pair in another box, another higher, lower, above, below. And now each one of those little boxes has a window. You open the window and you take out one of the birds, which he wants to do to shecht it on young. And here Bechamai says that the onlooker will see that he's moving the shova from, I'm sorry, moving the sulam, the ladder, from one halon to another. Clearly, he's using a ladder for shovel purposes. He's not climbing up on his roof, and there's no Myra sign. Basil Matirim, Basil say you're allowed to move the ladder from one shovel to another shovel. And we're not afraid of the onlooker. And just to give you a preview of coming attractions, there are two ways of understanding Basil. Why isn't Basil worried about the onlooker? One is because of the principle called Shovcho Mochiach Olaf, that the fact that he's using this Sulam, which is dedicated and singled out for the Shova, that is clearly a different kind of a ladder than the ladder you use to climb up to your roof. And the other interpretation of Basil El is that Basil is talking about someone who has a private Shova, meaning his Shova is not in the public eye. Bill Hulls is no Marasayan in that which you do in privacy. Only that which you do publicly lends itself to Marasayan. So don't ask me any questions about this because I'm just giving you a little bit of a far to what we're going to learn about in the Gemara. The Gemara now quotes Rav Hanan Bar Ami. Omar Rav Hanan Bar Ami. Machlokes Bishus The whole Machlokes is in the public eye. The Beit Shammai Sabri, Haroa Omer, Roa is the spectator, he mistakenly concludes that Latiach Gago Hutzar, he's using this ladder to climb to his roof and fix his roof. Basil Sabri, Shovko Mochiach Olov, the fact that he's using this ladder, which is designated for the Shovach, means he's not using a ladder that would climb up to the roof. It's a different ladder. Which means that Beit Shammai, even though they're worried about Maris Ayin, that's only in the public eye. But in the privacy of one's backyard, Beit Shammai agree that you're allowed to move the Shovach, the Tulam, from one Shovach to the other. And that means that Maris Ayin is only prohibited according to Rav Hanan, where? In public. Does everybody have that? If you don't get that, you're going to lose the whole cheer. 
All right, so let's get labor the Krabosa. It's it's a service made chuva. Any can this statement of Rav Hanan's premise be true? Va Omar Abiyuda Marav called Mokom Chosim Chachomim Vimeimaras Ayin Afilu Bechadrei Chadorim Also, we have a principle attributed to Rav that Maras Ayin is also even Bechadrei Chadorim. Now you and I might say, why should there be such an Easter? I mean, no one's coming into my privacy. I lock the door. Somebody's going to break into my house. That's what Mara Zion is. But the answer is the Chazal didn't want to play any games over here. They're not going to make these distinctions. What's considered public and what's private? And is your door locked? Is it not locked? Are your windows open? Are they not open? You are doing something that looks like an Easter. And if it looks like an Easter and it smacks like an Easter, and I'll prove it to you because you have Mara Zion, and the spectator accuses you of violating an Easter, then that's something you don't want to do at all, anywhere. And that's the principle of Rav, that Mara Sa'ayin is also even Bechadre Chadorim. Says the Gemara, you know what? Rav Hanan is standing on the shoulders of another Tana, and this whole issue of Chadre Chadorim is a machlokes Tanoim. Imagine the case where you left out some clothing under the sun, and guess what? It started raining, and now your clothing have become wet, and you want to dry it. Now, drying something, if you do it actively, is prohibited. It comes under a malachah called kibus. But here, he's not deliberately drying it. He's allowing the sun to dry it. However, there's a Maris Ayin problem, because someone who sees him setting up a wet cloth out in the sun might think and suspect him of having washed it on Shabbos or Yom. I know we learned in a price, so. And first we're going to present the sheet of the so-called Tanakama, the anonymous opening Tana. And he says, Shodchan Bechama, you have a wet garment, stretch it out in some private area where the sun will dry it. Do it in your backyard. But don't dry a wet garment in the sun out in the public area because you're going to incur the suspicion of the onlooker. He's going to think that you washed it on Shabbos. Rebbe Omer. I'm sorry, Rabbi Eliezer for Rabbi Shimon Osri. Why? Because they have the principle called what? Chadre Chadarim. Whatever is also in public, because of our science, is ipso facto prohibited in private. Now we have the sheet of the Tanakhama, so Rav Hanan feels very comfortable because he's waving the flag in the view of the first Tana who allows, as long as it's not connected to Am, and he's not worried in privacy about Marisai, and that's Rav Hanan, and therefore you can, even according to Beit Shammai, who's nervous about the Shovah, and the Sula moving from one Shovah to the other, he would allow it in the privacy of your backyard. But the Amri, now we have a totally different Mishnah of Rav Hanan Bar Ami, Machlokes B'Rishus the machlokas between Basil and Shamai is all about Chadre Chadorim. How far do we extend and apply the principle of Marasai? Beit Shamai Islahu, the Rabbi Yehuda of Arab. Beit Shamai accepted the sheet of Rab, which was also the sheet of Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon, that Marasai is prohibited even in privacy. But Chadre Chadorim. Ubeis Hillel, less lehud Rabbi Yehuda Marav, and they hold that in the privacy of your backyard, there's no problem. Marisa Ayin, and therefore you can move the sulam from Shovach to Shovach. Avol b'shus Arabim, according to the second Mishnah of Hanan, Divrei Akol Asur, even Beis Hillel accepted the principle of Marisa Ayin as it applies to Shovach with Shovach. Why? Because 
somebody who's at a distance does not notice that this sulam is uniquely dedicated for Shobach. He thinks this is a sulam to climb up to your ladder, Latiach has Gago, and is my Ryan. So the Gemara asks, Lema, Rav, the Omar Kibbe Shammai. If you make the calculation, then it comes out according to the second Mishnah in Rav Hanan that Rav is reflecting the Shita Beit Shammai because it was Beit Hillel according to Rav Hanan in the Lishna Basra who permitted Shobach le Shobach in privacy. And he rejected the principle of Chadre Chadbarim with regard to Maris Ayin. Rav accepted Chadre Chadbarim. It comes out according to Rav Hanan that Rav is reflecting the Shita Beit Shammai. And we never accept the Shita Beit Shammai against Beit Shammai. By the way, this cash is not a cash on Ra, <laughs> because Ra himself could accept the first list in, in Rav Hanan, which would mean that Basil held that it's mutter in general, meaning even in the public eye it's mutter, because it's Shobcho Mokhiacho. <laughs> and it was Basil who prohibited because Basil had a problem with Marisayan, and he asked it even in private because of this principle of Chadri Chadar. So it's not really a cash on Ram, but it's a cash on Rav Hanan because Rav Hanan's Lishna Basra presents a, a, a mathematical conclusion that, that uh, Rav could only square with uh, Beit Shammai against Beit Sur. says Tanoi, we're going to have an explicit machlokis about this issue of Chadri Chadar. As we learned, Shotchan Bechama, Avalokinegina Am, the Tanakama, as we saw before, allows you in private to stretch out and dry your wet cloth in, in the sun. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon Osrim, because they hold Chadre 